Hey there, in today's episode, we're going to create a basic menu system like this, where you can highlight the different colors and play a sound, and you can add this into your game immediately. In later episodes, we're gonna add more animations and effects and styles to this to uh, match different styles of games out there. So if you have any ideas, like you've seen a game where you have seen a really cool menu that does a cool effect, particle, something, uh, shoot me something in the comments below so I can take a look at it and see if we can reproduce that for a future episode. Or you could tweet it at me. My Twitter handle is in the description below. All right, let's get started. All right, before we begin, I wanna remind everybody that the download files for this project will be in the description below. So if you're struggling with something or you just wanna take a look at the code, go ahead and take a look at that. All right, to get started, uh, some normal settings in the game options. I always set this to 60 frames per second. And in the room, I tend to set this to 960 by 540. This is completely optional, especially for this tutorial. All right, we're gonna to go to the workspace and create a new object. We're gonna right click, click create. We'll call this O menu. And we're gonna add a create event. All right, in this create event, we're gonna store a couple of variables. Uh, one is the position of the menu. We're gonna start off with menu X equal to X and menu Y is equal to y. We can use these later um, and change them as needed. Next, we're gonna call it button height or button h. And this is going to just say how big are each of the individual menu items so that they're spaced apart correctly. We're gonna put 32 for this. And that's it for the, the, the beginning settings that we need. Next, we're gonna store the actual button names. And so buttons, and we're gonna create an array. So we're gonna call it button. Uh, open bracket, close bracket, and in there we're going to put the index, starting with zero. And we'll create new game. Let's copy this. We're going to uh, paste it a couple times so for a couple different options. So for the next button, button two, which is index one, it's going to be load game. Index two is going to be, let's say, options. And index three, which is the fourth button, is gonna be exit. So these are all the buttons that are, that are going to show up on the screen. All right, the, the next thing we need is to store how many of these buttons there are, just for easy access later. So we're gonna call it buttons. And we're gonna make it equal to array length 1D. It's this function right here. And we're gonna pass in buttons. What this does is it gives us how many items are in this array. So it will return four for this. We're gonna use that later to loop through, and make it easier. Okay, there's two more variables we're gonna add here in the create event. One is to store uh, where we are in the menu. If we were pressing up and down, which item are we actually selecting at the moment? We're gonna call that menu index. We're just gonna set it to zero. We'll start off with the very top one. And then the last variable we're gonna keep track of is last selected. And this is gonna be used to compare later to see if the current menu item that we just selected is the last one we selected. If it's not, then we can do a, an effect or play a sound or something like that. This is it for the create event, we're all done. So we're gonna move on to the step event. Go to step. And here we're gonna keep track of the movement we're gonna do that by saying menu move. We're gonna make it equal to a keyboard check. Oops. Uh, we're gonna do, I can't type today, check pressed. We're gonna check for the virtual key up and virtual key down. You can add your gamepad code here if you want. So VK down, and we're gonna say minus keyboard checked pressed. Keyboard, it would help if I spelled this correctly. There we go. And VK up. Okay, so what this is gonna do is, uh, it's going to return either zero, if nothing's being pressed, or both of them are being pressed at the same time, or one, if we're pressing down, because one would be returned from this, but zero would be returned from this, so that would return a total of one, one minus zero. 
If VK up is being pressed, it would be zero for this one minus one. So it'll return a negative one. So what we'll do is we'll add that to our menu index. And we're gonna say plus equals, which means add whatever is in menu move which is gonna be one, zero, or negative one to this, okay? So now, as we press our up and down keys, it's gonna move the, the menu index up and down. But there's a problem if we go out of bounds of this array. So if we're on menu item zero and we press up, it's gonna to go to negative one, which is gonna create an error. Or if we're on the last menu item and we add one and we go out of bounds, that's gonna create an error too. So we're gonna check for that and fix it. And what we're gonna do is say, if the menu index is less than zero, we're going to move it to the very end of the array. So then we'll say menu indexes is equal to buttons minus one. So if there's four buttons, we're gonna return the number three, which will move it to the end of the, the array. We'll do the same thing for if we're at the very end. So if menu index is greater than buttons minus one, it's kind of the exact opposite of the previous statement. We're gonna say menu index is equal to zero. Now what we're gonna do is uh, update the last selected is equal to menu index. We're gonna add some code here in a little bit for the, the playing the sound if the menu items change. Next we're gonna to go to the draw event. Now we're gonna draw everything to the screen. Okay, this is where that that buttons variable is gonna come in handy. So we're going to say, uh, we're gonna create a variable called i equal to zero, and then we're gonna do the repeat function, and we're gonna repeat buttons. So however many buttons we have, we're gonna repeat that. Okay, and we're gonna do i plus plus, which is gonna increment this every time we repeat. So if you've never used the repeat button, it says repeat however many times is in this variable. It'll loop around, but we need to add one to i to make sure that we don't get stuck in an infinite loop because i equals zero. Actually, you will not get stuck in a loop and a repeat. It will stop, but what we're about to draw won't work unless we, we do this. So we're gonna draw text, and we're gonna use those variables we created earlier, menu x and menu y. And then you draw the text, which is button index i. This is where the i comes in. Okay, so this is gonna loop through each of these and actually draw this. But right now, if I left this as is, it would, uh, don't forget your end bracket here. This would just draw everything on top of each other. So we have to have something that's gonna say, move the, min, the y value of where we're drawing down. And this is where that button h comes in. So we're gonna say, plus the button height times i. So this, when we multiply these, it's gonna push each button down to where it needs to be. Okay, so let's go ahead and check to see if everything's working. We're gonna go to our room and just drop menu onto the screen and test it. There, everything's there, but um, I'm pressing up and down, nothing's working. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add the logic to make the button colors change as well as play a sound. We're going to also change the font. So let's do that. We're going to go to fonts real quick. You can right click and create a font. We'll just call this font main. I'm just going to choose something I like. Choose whatever you want. I'm going to change this to 24 as the size. And then we're gonna add a sound too. So I'm gonna to go to right click sounds, create. Let's call it sound menu switch. Click the dot, dot, dot here and go choose your file. I already have one. Menu switch, whatever sound you want, bring that in and we're done with that. Okay, so let's, let's spice up the fonts and colors here. So we're gonna do a couple things. One is we're gonna say draw set font to equal that new font that we created, font main. This is gonna make the font look nicer. We're gonna draw set a line, the, the horizontal align. So you type H align, you can see the IntelliSense uh, showing you this. And you can say 
VA center. So this will center all the text instead of left aligning it. Now we're going to set the color. We're going to say draw set color. This is going to set the color that we're going to paint the, the menu. We're going to call it C light gray for now. LT gray. Now what we're going to do is going to say if menu index is equal to the current eye. So, cause what we're doing is looping through each of the buttons. We're not going to change the color of all the buttons to red. We're only going to change the one that's selected. And that's going to be the one where menu index is equal to I, whatever I were on. If that's the case, we're going to say draw set color C red. Okay. So this is everything to change the colors. Now let's go to the step event to add the function that's actually going to play the sound. Okay, we're gonna, before this statement last selected, we're gonna say, if menu index does not, that's what this exclamation mark means, does not equal um, last selected, we're gonna play a sound. So audio, play sound and there's three variables that you put in here one is the first one is the sound index so that's that that sound object we created which is called sound menu switch i think the second one's priority we're just going to say one and loop is the last one and that's false we don't want this the sound to loop and that's it now we should have a menu that shows up and it's the font's going to be bigger, nicer, and the colors are going to work. So let's play that. There we go. Okay, great. So now that's all working. Uh, it's not too fancy, uh, but for this tutorial, we'll keep it as simple. The last thing I'm going to show you guys is how to actually select one. So if you pressed enter, what would happen? So we're going to go to the add event and key pressed. We're going to say enter. And what we're going to do is just put a simple switch case here is switch uh, menu index. And now what we're going to do is we can say based on whatever menu index you are, you can run whatever code you want. I'm just going to put case zero, which is new, uh, the new game. Uh, we're just going to say, uh, let's say, uh, show debug message, new menu. Okay. And then we're going to break out of that. Um, I'm not going to put all the cases here. I'm going to do case. Uh, what was it? Number four, no three, which was to exit. We're going to say game end break. Okay. So basically I'm just putting in some dummy code here. We can, I can show you that the message new menu is going to show up here in the console, and then if I selected the last item, uh, it's going to end the game, uh, just to show you how it works. But you would put your code here if you wanted to uh, go to a different room and then you wanted to kill this instant, you would put code in there for that. Okay, so let's test that. Okay, so switching around, I'm gonna hit enter on load game, which nothing should happen, but watch the output when I go to new game. It says new menu down here, very small. I'll, I'll hit it several times and you can see it popping up. Last, let's hit the exit and it should kill the window. Yep. Okay. So that works exactly as we expected. So that's the basic building blocks for the menu that we plan on creating. We're going to use this uh, for future episodes where we're going to add more flair to the buttons, more animations, more styles, more effects. So hopefully that got you started. You can put this in your game immediately and check it out. Again, reminder that all the project files are in the description below, so check those out if you need to. And I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you in the next video.